All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are going to discuss, or I'm going to show you new features from uh, 122 through 124 for Student Manager. We are going to focus on Student Manager, but there is a new feature coming out in ACE Web, which will be released Monday, that I will tell you about. Uh, and then you'll just have to, you know, the anticipation will build until it's released, and then, then you'll uh, get to use it. So, going to go ahead and just jump in. Um, <laughs> the role of Matthew today will be played by me. Uh, I'm going to follow along with the slides as best I can. If you have questions, put them in the chat. If I can't answer them, we will defer to Matthew when he is back, and then we will get you your answers. So we're going to bounce around a little bit between builds. I'm not going to go quite linear 122, 23, 24. They're you know, not all in order that way. But the first new feature came out in 122, also send to instructors. So when we are sending emails, uh, like the send quick email to class, and I'm going to show you over here what I mean, you can now check the box, also send to instructors. I'm just going to go through all of this. Down here at the bottom, also send instructor a copy. You can check that box. And once you send an email, it includes the instructor. And you do not have to worry the next time you go in to send a quick email to class. It is already going to be checked for you down there at the bottom. So that's new feature number one. Back to the PowerPoint. Hybrid, show all on the fees tabs. So when we are looking at our course fees, we're gonna do a lot of bouncing around, don't get dizzy. Let me know if it's getting to be too much. <laughs> on the fees tab, and of course this is not a great example because there are no fees. For a hybrid course, I know I've got one in here. When we are looking at all of our fees on a course, there is a button here that says show all. And now it will show you on that screen when you're looking at it, whether you know it's physical fee or virtual. So you know, in person or not, that is there for you now. Next up, when a student cancels or when you're canceling a membership for a student, uh, typically the expiration date of that membership would um, nope back. The expiration date would be the end of the day that you're canceling it. But you know, if I call and cancel, but I'm still trying to get into this course and I do it later this afternoon, we don't want that to happen. So now what it will do is set that membership to expire yesterday. So yesterday or the day before, if that makes more sense to you. So that way you can't still use that membership benefit once you've canceled it. Excel, exporting and importing. You don't need Microsoft Excel to import files anymore. Uh, yay, yay, for those of you who don't have Excel, you can still have that spreadsheet and import into Student Manager. And of course, exports haven't required them for quite a while now. Next up, gift cards. If you have the gift card module, if you don't, you should definitely check it out. I bet you'll really like it talk to your tech, uh, you will now see on the payment screen for a gift card who the recipient is. So what do I mean by this? Over here in Student Manager, when we set up our gift card course, I'm going to go through this a little quickly. When you are, when someone's purchasing a gift card, on the payment screen, and I'll actually show you a little bit in advance of that. So if someone's calling to buy a gift card, Sharon, Sharon, you're going to get a gift card. And you know oh, what? I'm it's going to be, um, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You're going to get the card for me. And it's going to be for like $500 because you're feeling particularly generous. And of course, if you aren't paying attention, like I was not, I didn't even select payment type before trying to save. So it's going to warn me about that. But once we add our payment, it's going to be in cash money and we save it, you're going to get this screen that's looking for another name in the system, right? So Sharon, are you buying this for yourself or for someone else? In this case, me. So we're just going to look for me. There are probably several in here. And you're going to select the name. And now you will see down at the bottom below the pay note who the recipient is. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's pretty cool. Yay. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it on, but um, yeah. <laughs> so 
that's gift card. Next up is payment distribution on a billing only record. So when you are enrolling a whole bunch of people in a course, right, and you're grouping them together and we decide that, you know, we have one person paying for it all, they're not really enrolled in the course, that makes them a billing record. If you're applying multiple payments, now it's not going to put, it, it, it's not going to ask for you to distribute that money because there is no money going to everyone else, right? It's all going on that one record. If you have questions about billing records, we can come back and look at that, but just know that it's not going to prompt you anymore. Certificate wizard. Do we have folks using the certificate wizard? Want to raise, raise your, your hand? hand up, folks? As Stephanie right, I is saying one. she does. Who else do we have? Uh -oh. Just uh, and Amanda. Okay. All Stephanie right. And Amanda, right. you've got a couple. Marsha. Cool. Yep, they're slowly raising their hands. Awesome. So with the certificate wizard in the past. It was just, I'm looking for people who have taken courses from blah, and you didn't really get the option to say blah or blah, blah. There just, there wasn't an option for that, but there is now. So when we run our certificate wizard, it's under, mine is under transcripts, reports, registrations, transcripts. And of course, good rule of thumb with Certificate Wizard with certificate programs in general is you have grouping codes assigned to them. So my query is going to be on grouping codes. And um, oh, I don't know, grouping code is, I probably should have picked one for in a list. There we go. And I'm just going to start adding. Uh, notice over here on the right as a refresher, the ellipses button, if you push that, it will pull up a list of all your grouping codes. So I'm just going to put a bunch of them in here. And I'll say OK. And remember, when running transcripts, do you want to exclude things that haven't ended or started? I don't care. I'm going to say no exclusion. What about duplicates? Let's go ahead and remove them. And it runs a lot. And it, once we preview it, we close it. Hey, what did I do wrong? I didn't select additional reports. This is going very well today. Uh, let's run that again. Sometimes you have unintended results when you're running a report. If it happened, it was probably you didn't select the right one. In this case, that's exactly what I did. Maybe your query, who knows? All right, so now I'm going to select my certificate wizard. And in here, we would see an or, and this could be my old one. So let's see, a cert, yeah. Now there is an option to say or. So <laughs> know that that's there. And I'll run it one more time just to make sure we're, we're running the right thing. It may not be in here the way I thought it was. So actually, let's just bail out of this. If you're using the certificate wizard, it's not just an and anymore. Cool, great, awesome. Any questions on that? Uh, not seeing any right now, okay. but if you think of them, folks, send them our way. Awesome. All right, folks. Moving on, cancel a package one course. If you are canceling someone enrolled in a package type one, you will be prompted, do you want to cancel them in all of the children courses? Why is that, Lindsay? What's a package one? I don't know, but I bet we could find out. Um, let's see, over here, Aceware, online reference guide. If you are using package courses, there are two types. One type, you are enrolled in that course and also in the courses that are packaged together. In the other type, it sort of works as a little bit of a Trojan horse. You enroll in this course that exists, but you aren't like you, you enroll through it basically and you, there is no registration record for it. There's only registration records of the courses in that package. So in the package one course, which is what we're talking about, there is a record of the registration in that course. So if we were to come back over to student manager and find a package, let's see, package type one. I've got one person enrolled in here. 
So Charlie, if we were to cancel, if you're canceling you know, and issuing a refund, you should use the refund wizard. Do you wanna clear everything? Yes. Delete attendance if you're tracking it, yes. And then you're gonna be asked, do you also want to cancel the, or would you also like to cancel the child courses? Chances are real good you're gonna say yes, but maybe, maybe not. You just wanna cancel them out of this, but leave them in the others. So in this case, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And then canceled from all three child courses. Next up, recording course attendance. You can now select an individual when you are recording attendance from the course record. So if I find one with folks enrolled, so if you have the attendance tracking module over on the right-hand side, you get that record attendance button. And you will notice we can show it for all dates up at the top left, which has been there before. You can show records for only a certain date. And now you can show records only for a certain name. So when you have a course with 50 people in it, it is probably much easier to show records for a specific name, or even if there's only two people, but you only need to enter you know, attendance records for one. So that is an option now as well. Course CRM, wait, what? what is that, Lindsay? I don't know. So the same way on a, uh, on a name record, right? If we were to pull up a name record on the comments and history tab, there's the CRM portion down at the bottom that logs the contact type, the date. If you're sending an email, it logs the subject, who the user is. That is now also on the course screen. You will notice the comments tab has changed a bit, but that's okay. Down at the bottom, if you send an email to students, so that send quick email to class, it is going to log it on the course record. So it was, I sent an email, I sent it to Char and I sent it to Charlie and this was the subject. So this is another really helpful tool. Although we can't store the email that you send out, we do now have another place when a student says you didn't send it, you can come to the course record and say, an email was sent on this date with this subject, and you will see that student's name. Yay, that's fantastic. It's been a big Any ask. questions? Yep, not yes. yet. All right. Next up is a default publish date. So again, course record, there is the option now to set a certain publish date. So you put in your setting and then the date that you want it to take over. Now in your preferences, there is a publish date formula. So this is something, if you, if you are using that publish date, but putting a particular date in there on the course record isn't the most helpful thing for you, you have another uh, formula or, or, you know, method for when you want something to publish, get with your technician and they will help you set up this formula. You are not expected to know it on your own. Just know that this is an available new feature. Combine names. This one is one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> and this is one that was 18 years plus in the making. So when you uh, combine a name record, previously you would try to combine two names, right? So Lindsay Lieberman is in here 50 times probably, or yeah, Lindsay, welcome email, whatever it is. You try to combine the names, right? We copy the ID and then we go over to the other one that we want, the, the old one, right? We take the ID of the good one and put it over the ID of the bad one. And then it says, right, this already belongs to someone. And you say, great, combine them. If both of these name records prior to 123 were enrolled in the same exact course, you could not combine the names. You had to do some fancy footwork of like moving the money from one of the people over to the other one and then deleting the registration. And if you're using the Visual Fox Pro version of Student Manager, you had to pack and re-index. It was a whole nightmare. And so names wouldn't necessarily be combined all the time manually. And that's why, but 
that is not the case anymore. Hooray, lots of cheering and confetti in the background. If both names are enrolled in the same course, you can still combine the name records. And anything that's not on the good twin or the record you want to keep, so like user defined fields, you know, whatever, they will be moved over so that they stay with that one person. Hooray, that's fantastic. I hear all the cheering. <laughs> I hope no so. Way, like, I'm just no trying to, to imagine it, emojis right? on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to have to get like a cheer track and a laugh track or something and just, you know, play it every now and then while we go through these. So next up is scheduling a course reminder on a course by course basis. So course reminders are an individual preference. So on your course tab, down toward the bottom right, you can send course reminders on a number of days before the begin date, right? And this is just a default number. So send course reminders, you know, 10 days before the begin date, that's what's gonna be there forever and ever. But you can now change it at the course level. So if the, over on the comments tab, you have this email reminders to students, right? The box is checked because my preference is checked. You do now have the option to enter a certain, a specific date and time. So otherwise it will do the number of days before. This is really helpful if you need to send multiple reminders to the same course, right? That may be an example of when to use this, you know, send reminders, all of your courses 10 days in advance, but this one course, I need to send another reminder, but I need to be reminded to do it. You could send all your reminders and then come in here on that specific course record and go ahead and put in another date and time. And now that one will be included in the list of reminders to send when you sign into student manager. Hooray. Okay, the next one is another 18 plus years in the making. We really do need to get a cheer track. I don't know, like air horns and confetti and all of it. Well, there's some uh, confetti throwing here going on right. um, in uh, writing and in emojis. So yeah, yeah. All good. right, hooray. <laughs> this, this is one of the greatest ever. Uh, maybe you need to run a maintenance routine, right? And people are signed into student manager because it doesn't matter how many times you say, I have scheduled this for blah, blah, blah. Please make sure you're signed out. <laughs> and you send reminder after reminder. Inevitably, someone is still signed in. So. While we still can't just kick people out of student manager, unfortunately, because that would be ideal, but we can't do it. You can now, after checking for users, tools, show users, or control you, anyone who is signed in, if you click on their email address, you get the student manager, you know, mass email screen, right? And you can put in here, you know, whatever your subject is, whatever your message is, could send yourself a copy, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever. And of course, all of this is assuming that they're near their email, but you can now send an email to people that says sign out of student manager. Hooray! It's just <laughs> one more helpful tool uh, to... Um, hopefully get people to listen and sign out. So hopefully you can see, can you see the little paper cut screen? I'm pretty sure I shared everything. We can. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So you'll notice, log out of student manager, please. And then there's the message. So, wow, that's awesome. Super cool. Oh boy, Lindsay, there's a question here. Can you yeah. group the email or do you have to send individual emails? You know, that's a good question. And I was just thinking about that myself. Um, let's find out, let's sign. Um, Let's sign Chuck in too, shall we? All right, so now let's go back to where I was checking. I think it's individual, but um, all right, so we see two users are here. And let's try sending an email. Oh, no, it is a mass email. It is well and truly, yeah, so it will go to 
everyone who signed in. That was an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. So yes, click on one of the email addresses and it's going to go to everyone. It's even cooler now, right? Very much so. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So then, there we are. The next one, search the select screen. On a course record, let's say you're trying to, I don't know, print certificates and you have a bunch of people in the course, like 500 people, whatever it is. You, know, you can do quick reports and you can select certificates and we say, okay. And then it asks, do you wanna run for everyone or the ad date or do you wanna select? I definitely wanna select because it's like one person who keeps losing their certificate, but it's in this sea of hundreds of people that's not helpful, right? Because then you're trying to scroll through and hope you remember the name and all of it and it's spelled right. So now at the top right, there is a little search box. Can find, I click on find and it will highlight the matching record. Super cool. And then it will, if you uh, actually deselected the rest of them, it will print only the certificate for that one person. All right, next one, search reports by keyword. This, this was a wish list. Uh, somebody requested it and it turned out, you know what, it's totally doable. I think, um, I think Matthew actually wrote a newsletter article about it, maybe last month or the month before. So we know in Student Manager that if we're looking for a report and we're not sure where it is, you can go to Tools and Reports and search reports for keyword. And we can put in, you know, whatever it is. I don't think I have a certificate wizard one. Um, whatever, roster. And then it will search. And first you get your default reports. And if I were to hit escape, you get your additional reports. Oh man, there's a bunch of these. I so so now prior to last month's build, you would have to like take a screenshot of this or write it down or rely on your impeccable photographic memory to know, all right, I'm gonna try rosters, attendance roster, quick reports, and I'm gonna try this one. Oh no, that wasn't it. Oh, you see what just happened. And so, you know, you, you may still be coming back to this search screen over and over because you still haven't found exactly what you need. Well, forget that. No longer do you have to do that. Um, I don't know, what is HEI reporting? If you just click on the report description on that title, it's gonna pull up the report screen for, for where you need to be. And so you can say, okay, and you can put in your query just to see, am I gonna get anything? And since you clicked on that specific report in, that, in the search results, it's automatically gonna select that and run it for you. And if this isn't it, well, if it's it, great, awesome, wonderful. You didn't have to spend a lot of time searching, but if it's not, you can close it. You don't expect to see that, so we ignore it. Oh, because it's an export. Never mind, that wasn't an error. Um, and then you're right back on the screen and you can go to the next one that you need to run. So this is a really, really neat, uh, neat new feature. Those in attendance agree with you. All right, all right, all right. Next up, additional course reminders. So the course reminder notes, this is not the reminder emails, this is the course reminders, like um, callbacks, right? Like name callbacks but on courses. So again, on comments, and we wanna remind Bob on a certain date, right? 7, 15, whatever. But let's say you need to set multiple reminders. Like I need to remind Bob and Sharon and Lindsay and Penny and Charlie and Lucy and everyone. You can come in, what I did was I clicked on additional reminders and you can just add the, you know, Chuck, I'm gonna remind Chuck on, um, I don't know, the 24th and I'm gonna pick my date and it's there. And then I can put in the notes, right? And then you can add someone else, missing core data. Lindsay, you should put information in there. And then you can add another one. So just going through the list. So it doesn't matter how many people, uh, it doesn't matter how many of the same person, right? So we'll remind him on the 24th and the 28th, right? Not, why not? Add again. So you can do this for one specific user multiple times or multiple users or multiple users multiple times. 
okay. And now it's all saved. And so on those days, you would you would find them in course reminders on you know startup or under tools check for reminders. And the next feature, another uh, wish list item. Really, all of these are wish list items. Uh, you can copy your favorite reports to another person. Hooray! So. Everybody has their own favorite reports on the quick launch screen. My favorite reports right here. So signed in as ACE. What do they look like over on Lindsay? Okay, none. All right, good. That'll work. Um, I am going to sign out though, because when we're you know dealing with stuff like this, it's it's a little better just to make sure the other users out. But under tools and password maintenance. If you want your reports to be the same as someone else's, we would pull up the someone else. You can edit their favorite reports, right? But you can also copy favorite reports to another user. So you don't have to go in and add individual, you know, 12 favorite reports, just copy them over. But um, I don't want to do that on that one. I actually want to do that on mine. Copy favorite reports to another. So from your record, copy to another. It's going to pull up the list of other users. So we're going to pull up Lindsay. Warning, it's going to overwrite Lindsay's favorite reports. So side note, I am signed in as Ace, right? I have two different usernames. Ace is how I'm signed in. Lindsay is another uh, user, user account. So OK, you're going to do this. OK, I want to. Great. Copy complete. Cool. So we can save it. And now when Lindsay signs in, when I talk about myself in the third person. We should find favorite reports. So they now match ACE. They match ACE's favorite reports. And I may be going too fast, but a lot of these screens, just kind of take notice as an aside, I'm hitting escape and abandon a lot of the time. That's because that is your one fail safe if you are on a record, if you have done anything at all, if you're not sure if you've changed something, escape key or abandon. That way you don't inadvertently change information and save it. So there's my soapbox for that one. Questions? That's good. No? All That's right, good. good. All right. So mass grouping, if you have you know, a, a group of registrants, maybe from a particular company, and now they need to add another person, but you already have an invoice, and surely this never happens to you. Has this ever happened to you? Of course not. Uh, <laughs> when you group, you will be prompted on what to do with those existing invoices. Do you want to leave the existing ones alone? Maybe. Do you want to avoid them? Do you want to have a new one, reinvigorate? So much easier and, and more straightforward way of, of dealing with your mass groups and your invoices all over the place. Next up, register instructors. So from you can now enroll an instructor in a course. Uh, you know, you could create an instructor, you could make a name or make instructor record, right, from one of those two, from a blue screen to a gray screen, a gray st screen to a blue screen. But now you can actually enroll an instructor in a course. What? That's great. So, oh, I don't know, Mike, we're going to pick on Mike. On the instructor record on the right-hand side, add registration. And it's going to ask you, is there, you know, do you need to make a new student record, right? They have to also be in the student table. What do you want to do? Make a new record, link to an existing student record or cancel, right? So I'm pretty sure Mike has a name record in here. So I'll, you know, just link to an existing record, right? And there he is. So you can do that. And then it's going to look for which course to, you know, where, where do you want, want to enroll him? Great. And it puts the instructor in the course. So just saves a step basically, right? Um, yeah, sure. So th in this course, there are registrations on the waiting list. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and move this one to the wait list too. Great. Awesome. You can do the same thing from the course record. Um, on, on the instructor tab, there, there may be some reason that the instructor of record, the person teaching the course also needs to be enrolled in the course. Um, 
Maybe it's a like a professional development thing to be able to get the CEUs, who knows, but you can do this from the course record, register and register instructor in this course, link to an existing record, make a new student record. So same exact thing as from the instructor record. All right, here comes an awesome one, get ready for it. Reorder columns on searches. So this isn't on every search screen, like every lookup when, you know, it's, it's not on every one, but the ones with seven or more columns, okay, you can reorder those columns on the screen. And boy, isn't that fantastic, I gotta tell you. So on the name record or on the name lookup, for instance, you'll notice, right, last name is the first column. But what if I really wanna see the ID first? You click on the heading and you just drag it over. Now, the thing to remember about this, okay, the default sort order on your, your, your lookup screen, and you'll notice once I moved it, it's now over here. The default sort order is the first column. So it's gonna default to the ID column now as the sort, and the second column is secondary. So since last name was here, you know, the, the first column before, last name was alphabetical, but now it's gonna go by ID. But it's pretty helpful, you know, maybe maybe this, the columns, there's too many of them, but you really wanna see email, right? Before their address, you can move that over. So yay, that's hey. fantastic. Hey, a question on this from Lucas. Yeah. When you do this, does it change the columns for everyone? Is it a uh -uh. global change or just the individual? Should be just the individual. Very good. And while I have you here, Lucas also asked, we're going to go back a little bit on that copy reports, mm -hmm. favorite reports. Um, what's the power level to copy those? Can a lower power level change a level six, for example? That is such a good question. Um, uh, 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 I don't know. <laughs> One of those, we'll get back with you, and <laughs> we will. Yes, we will get back with you. My my guess here is that you know it's it's not going to be. Did he add something in here? He didn't. That's gonna that, that's a good question. I'm gonna say my my guess or how I would envision it, perhaps you as well, would be that you have to have a certain power level in order to copy your reports. Otherwise, that's a fantastic and awful like. April Fool's kind of prank. What was the question? I missed the question. The oh. question, Cheryl, was on copy favorite reports to another. Is there a specific power level you have to have? And can a level three, for example, uh, copy over mm -hmm. to a level six? As far as I know, you have to be a level six just to pull up the screen. Oh, yeah. 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 Because this is an admin routine. That's a really good point, Cheryl. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And a couple more questions uh, about Thank the you, column sorting. Yeah, we, it's it's yeah. good to have the great and wise Cheryl. It with us. is. <laughs> <laughs> um, if the columns are reordered, do they stay like that? So if you uh, back out and come back in, do they stay that way, or just while you're using it at that moment? Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong one. No, uh, they should stay that way. Yeah, they should that stay. That was my understanding, too. Yeah. But... Yes. So it's kind of like making your favorite view, like a favorite report, your favorite They view. should stay that exactly. way, even if you shut student manager down and get back in it. Let's see. Do you think I need to? No, I should be able to do it this way. And I got some reminders coming up. Yeah, clear it. Let me just click through all of these. Yep, it stays. It definitely stays. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Anything else? But can we always rearrange them to oh, what yeah. it once was? Yep. Yep, yep. So I could move this back over. And then when I come in next time, it's going to be over here. Great I question. love having Great the ID comment. right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Can you only cool. sort the first column or rearrange them all to your liking? 
Uh, you can rearrange, you can put columns, you know, wherever, wherever you'd like. And of course, I've got the wrong one pulled up here. So there we Boy, go. They're very excited about this. Great comments and <laughs> feedback and questions. Yes. So yeah, you can put your columns wherever. Just remember that the default sort when you pull this screen up is on column one. But, Alrighty. you know, <laughs> just because you put it there, you can click on email and resort it, right? You could click on last name, resort that. And here's a That's good one. That's totally fine. Can yeah. you delete or hide columns? Oh, uh, no, <laughs> but it's a great question. <laughs> Unless Cheryl knows something I don't, but no, no. You can't, sorry. So if there are things you don't wanna see, my recommendation would be to click on them and drag them all the way to the right so you don't have to see them. Yeah, you can't get exactly. rid of them, but Lindsay's yeah. right. Just drag them off to the right. Just pretend like they don't exist. What else we got? Great. I think that's it for now. Good conversation. Okay. Cool, cool. So the only other thing is student-generated payment plans. Uh, this is coming out. It, it's in. It's it's ready for student manager now. But the student-generated part of it is Ace Web, and that is set to be released on Monday. So the idea behind this is get ready, hold on to your seats. The idea behind this is that students, when enrolling in a course and choosing, you know, the invoice option, will be able to set up their payment plan within certain guidelines through Ace Web. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, we should definitely get some sort of applause track, Sharon. This is this is my plan for the next webinar. Uh, but <laughs> it's it's one more way of putting things in students' hands to do the work, so that you don't have to. They can go in and handle that payment plan on on their own. Yay. And we've got some comments like, whoa, there you <laughs> go. That help you? Yeah. Say what? I said, does that help you? If I yes. give the if I make the soundtrack being provided yes. by the people. Whoa. Whoa, that's perfect. Um, and that's that's actually all all I have to to show you. Um, with that said, of course, if you are ever Wonder if you you're not sure or you're kind of wondering what um you know what else might be out there new features subscribe to our forum uh, create an account when you're logged in if you look on a board like student manager updates once you've logged in you will find down at the bottom something that says subscribe and that means anytime something is posted anytime Cheryl puts up a new post about a new release you will get a notification in your email. So in this case, you'd get a notification, you know, 124 released, you could click that link and come right in here and see what the features are. Maybe you also are interested in the uh, in the fixes. For those of you who are on 123, uh, there is the, the weird view issue with the, um, with the payment screen and fields overlapping and that bled over into other screens that is fixed in 124. So you know, go ahead, get with your tech, get with your IT person, whoever does the updates and, and go ahead and update. So that's fixed. But yep, all the releases, everything going back to what, 2012, I think it is. Yeah, everything's here for you. Student manager and Ace Web. Cool. What else? Any, any questions? Well, Lucas brought up a great webinar topic. Um, since, um, this isn't ready on ACEWEB, these mm -hmm. payment plan. Mm -hmm, It'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could even be in August where we have a webinar and setting up payment plans in manager, you know, where you can do it behind the scenes or how you set it up for students to generate their own on ACEWEB. So I think we have a great August webinar topic there just in yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And there was a question for those who may be listening to the recording later. There was a question about, um, is there a way to change the column on those columns works again, change the columns for everyone at one time instead of just an individual setting and no, no, there's that's not available. They it's done on an individual basis. So, so that everybody has that answer. Thanks. Other questions, folks. Great conversation today. Well, I guess it's quiet. It's, it's quiet. I hope you all plan to join us next week, next Thursday, to see more about gift cards. Um, I have a user that's using gift cards, and she may kind of share her 
how they've got that all set up too. So yeah, hope you all join us next week. Let's see. Oh, another good webinar, upcoming webinar on preferences or user power levels. That's good too. Uh, yes. Um, let's see. There's a question here. Want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Anything you all? Let's see. Was the first slide? Can quick email an instructor and then cancel the membership? Let's see. Who's asking this? Okay. Well, you're looking that one up. Um, just a reminder, we do have the webinar archive out there and available on our website, aceware.com forward slash webinars. So if you're looking for something, uh, I think preferences was, I mean, we've got, you know, student manager preferences out here. We've got a two-parter and also mm -hmm. sort of within other webinars. So you may want to check those out. Yep, yep. Well, and for everybody to know, this is being recorded. So if you need to jump back in and and take a review of the things that were mm -hmm. mentioned. You'll be able to do that, share it with your colleagues. Yep. So. And Lucas, there's a follow the money uh, that does have a preview of payment plans if you wanted to check that out. Yep. Cool. All right, Sharon, what was the question? Very good. No, I just wanted oh. to remind you there were some things missed at oh, okay. the start of the session. So just reminding everybody that this is recorded. And uh, usually Lindsay and I have that all done in 24 hours so probably yes. tomorrow certainly by the end of the week you'll be able to catch that recording and review lots of new goodies and lots of really good new goodies everybody enjoys those so Lindsay everybody give her a round of applause she <laughs> is a great pinch hitter and hit a home run didn't she she All did right. great at just stepping in last minute and <laughs> we appreciate it very much nicely done all of you have a great rest of your afternoon remember to join us next week and if there's directors out there I'll be sending out a message for a director's coffee next week let's get together and do some talking then too so until then have a great afternoon, and we'll catch you soon. Bye, everyone. Right. Take care, everyone. Bye.